Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the series that I call Hobby Table. Uh, this is where I show you projects that I have been working on more on the painting, crafting, modeling side of our beloved hobby. And what I'm going to be showing you in this video is what I've been up to during December 2022. And I have been fairly busy by my standards. <laughs> Uh, I am also still testing out this wireless microphone, so hopefully the uh, the balance is good and the, the sound quality is good. I'll check it in uh, in editing, but normally by that time it's too late to make any changes. But here we go, here we go, here we go. Right, in front of us, what we have here are some, as you can see, skeletons. And these are very, very old models. These are from... I think it was from the 1980s. Yeah, that long ago. The mid I think it was I think there was a there was a box set of skeletons. I think it was called the Skeleton Horde by Citadel Miniatures and I think it was released in the mid 1980s and I bought it way back then. Yes, I am old. <laughs> uh, and I did actually assemble these guys way back then. I mean these these have been assembled but unpainted for god, god how many years? Too many years. But in my upcoming Five Leagues from the Borderlands game, I actually need skeletons. So I thought, hang on, I think I've got some old skeletons lying about somewhere that I just haven't done anything with. So I searched through all my boxes and I found them. <laughs> and surprisingly, there was only a few where parts had broken off, you know, where the arms had come away from the torso or maybe the, the skeleton had come off the base. <laughs> Oops, sorry, not the camera. So what you see here, these, these rear three rows are actually skeletons from those oldie days. <laughs> and they've actually come out pretty good. Now, again, when I assembled these miniatures way back in the day, I chose to do a lot of different poses, so they don't all have like standard equipment or anything, but um, yeah, they, they've come out quite well. So I've kind of used old method, old style methods to paint them, also the old school method of just flocking the base, because I want to give them that kind of <laughs> back in the day look, you know? <laughs> so I've done a lot of these. I mean, I think there are a few more in a box somewhere that I didn't get to actually do. But this this should be plenty enough for my five leagues from the Borderlands game, uh, as well as the skeleton horde figures, which are very light. They're very very. I think I have to glue some some coins under the base to give them a little bit of a little bit of heaviness, so they're not going to fall over everywhere. Um, but as well as these, in the same box, I also found some other skeletons character models. From another very old set, I think it was the Skeleton War Machine box. Again, very, very old set. And again, these had been based and cleaned and undercoated, but just not painted. So I also painted up three character models for these skeletons. And again, they've come out quite well. Nothing special, nothing brilliant. I'm not a pro painter. I'm a tabletop level painter. Uh, and again, I just use the old school flop on the base. But I think they still look pretty damn good. Now, with these guys, I actually tried a number of ways to do the, the bone in a fast way. Um, I did try using the, where is it? The speed paint. The Where is it? Oh, I'm not going to be able to find it now, am I? The little gets hiding. Oh, here we go. The Speed Paint Pallid Bone, but this, I've, I've tried this a number of times on a number of different figures, and I just haven't been able to get a, a good bone finish on this. Uh, but what I have found, and what I've done on all of these figures, yeah, every single one of them, even the character models, I use the same, the same, same method to do the bone, is I just undercoated white, yeah, or prime, primed it white, and then I just applied a layer of Minwax Wood Stain or Wood Finish. This is the cherry color. And I just applied a coat of this. Yeah, again, a, a bit of an old method, but it works. It, it, 
The, these figures haven't had any highlighting, any shading, any other washes. It's just, it's just the Minwax wood stain. That's it. And it worked really, really well. Again, it's not a high quality job. It's not something that you could put in a show or you're going to win awards for. But in terms of painting a ton of skeletons, it works really well. And another benefit is it actually gives, I think it's a, I think it's a polyurethane based um, wood stain. So it actually gives a, a, a protective coat as well. Uh, and then I just, you know, painted the shields and the weapons. Um, I did actually use um, speed paints for the clothing and also for the gloves. Uh, hardened leather, I think, for the gloves. But yeah, it, it's it's come out definitely usable. Like I say, they're not going to win any awards, but they're perfectly good enough for tabletop games and for YouTube videos from a distance. <laughs> But yeah, um, so I'm going to be up against these guys in um, Five Leagues from the Borderlands, my next uh, my next battle for that. So these guys kind of skipped the queue by a few decades. <laughs> but they're done. Now I have uh, a small group of skeletons that I can use in skirmish games. So this was actually one of the one of the projects, one of the things I did during December. Now, I do have a bunch of other stuff to show you. Let's go and have a look at those. Right, next up. Now, these may look familiar. I featured these in a previous hobby table. Um, but at that point, I think the one video, they were basically just printed out and in pieces. Uh, another video, they were undercoated only. But now, I finish painting them. <laughs> these are from Bestiarum. And I think these are from the Corrupted Ambrosia set. But... Uh, Bestiarum has recently um, changed or updated its welcome pack for Patreons. So if you join the Patreon, you can actually get these models for free in the welcome pack. They've, they've changed the welcome pack. Now, these are the Idol and the Corrupted Idol miniatures. So let's have a quick look. Now, for these, I used a mixture of paints. I used, um, I think it was runic grey for the basic statue effect. Uh, I then used a number of different metallics for the armour, the bracelets and the mirror. I've just, I've just used the shiniest silver paint that I have. It's a simple way of doing a mirror. There's no reflections or anything like that, but it's, it's shiny enough. So now this is the basic idol here. Uh, I based it on a piece of art art board or art card just to, again, just to prevent resin contacting the glass in the cabinet. But yeah, this came up quite nice. Again, speed paint worked really quite well. Um, speed paint, as you've seen in my other videos, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship. Some of them work really well. The runic grey is one of my favourites. The yellow, the orange, the reds, the, the magic blue, those ones seem to work really, really nicely. It's when you come to some of the other colors like Pallid Bone and the um, Holy White. Ugh, those things are terrible. But yeah, this is the basic idol from Bestiarum. And then you have the Corrupted Idol where it basically gets animated and possessed and used by some kind of nether creature. So it comes with this large base that you can print out. Again, I've put a layer of card underneath it to prevent resin contacting the glass cabinet surface. Um, the tentacles or the creature, the, the corruption I've done in, I think it was slaughter red um, uh, speed paint, and then I had to give it some highlights. Again, you can see the main sort of idle body is the runic grey. And for the sort of bone or the sort of creature body, Again, it was just a white undercoat and run rats wood stone. <laughs> this is actually where I got the idea before I actually painted the skeletons. I did it on this first to sort of test it out, and it came out. I don't know it just it just works. I don't. I haven't had to highlight. Again, it's not perfect. I know there's some people thinking, looking at it, going, "Oh, I can do a better job than that." I'm sure you can, mate. I'm sure you can, but I don't care. <laughs> I just need things that are good enough for the table and decent enough to put on camera. I'm not expecting to win any awards. I just want something that looks decent enough. So this was the Corrupted Idol. I think I had a comment when I 
when I first showed this, when I printed this out in its parts, I think there was a comment on the YouTube saying that uh, I'll never, <laughs> I'll never, you'll never get that painted. <laughs> it's going to be months, it's going to be years. Well, look, it's done. I actually got it finished. And I'm actually pretty happy with it. Uh, the base, uh, what did I do with the base? I think I gave it the wood stain and then I gave it a dark tone uh, army painter wash. Again, it's not brilliant, but it's okay. It will do, it will do. Add a few little tufts. I think they're woodland tufts from Army Painter. It will do for what I need it for. Um, now, I do have plans for these uh, for a game. A game that I was actually planning to do over Christmas, but I couldn't get some of the other models finished in time. So I may actually run that game... Mm, fairly soon, as long as I can get the other models finished. Um, actually, I'll show you those other models now. They're currently assembled and undercoated, but I have to get them painted before I can use them with the game I'm planning with these guys. So let's, let's take a look at those other models. <laughs> I think you guys are going to like these ones. Uh, these are from Arch Villain Games. They are from their, I think it was their December Patreon. So January 2023, they should be available for everybody to purchase. These are <laughs> penguins. <laughs> Psychonata Viking penguins. I love them. I really, really love these figures. Uh, like I say, I was planning to have these guys painted for a game for my Christmas game, but I couldn't get them done in time. So I had to do another game for my Christmas video. I did the Gift Bringer, the little Roll and Write game for my Christmas video. Um, but these are planned to be my next painting project. <laughs> How many times have I said that? But yeah, these are four, there's four, four different designs in the set. You've got the one who's sliding on his belly. You've got <laughs> a, a sort of skateboard, a skateboarder who's basically sort of skating, skateboarding on a, I don't know, some orcas or some whale's jawbone or something. <laughs> I love these minis. As soon as these were released, I said to the I said to the guys at Archfield and I said, "Oh, these are a must print. I, you, everyone's got to print these." You got another one here with the full hoodie going on and some kind of very basic shield, like a bone a bone dagger, a little bit of a little bit of hair there. I love these. I really do like these. They're a little bit bigger than I was expecting, actually. Um, scaling these down a little bit probably wouldn't hurt, but be careful of things like the weapons, the staffs, because the, and also the quills on the on the head and stuff. Because if you scale it down, they're going to get even thinner. And Archville and Games, I tend to find their some of their components are a little bit thin and easy to break. But uh, this is like the shaman or maybe the witch doctor of the crew. But yeah, so I, I have these. These four arch villain games penguins that I was planning to do a game for. Uh, and also with these guys, I actually wanted to have a kind of fifth member of the party. So I did actually pull out from my collection. Again, he was only undercoated at the time. Uh, but I got this guy actually painted up. And this is, I don't know how well you can see it there, but this is an ice elemental. Yeah, all that bloody edging took freaking ages to do. But this is an ice elemental from the... I think the game's now extinct. I think the game's now gone the way of the dodo. Uh, Dark Age, the game Dark Age, which was like a sci-fi post-apocalyptic fantasy game where you had the draggery, these sort of alien creatures. You had the outcasts. You also had the Forsaken... Yeah, and the brood. I love the brood. Puds everywhere, puddly pud. But yeah, this was an ice elemental that I got from Dark Age back in the day when I used to be an outcast. I used to be a demoer for the game at shops. I used to do some playtesting for them as well. And I actually dug this guy out and painted him up finally. Again, I've got so many figures that are in the sort of prime state, the undercoat state. But I got this, this guy actually painted up and, and painted because... I kind of figured that he would be a good fifth member for these guys, for what I have planned. <laughs> now, what game needs five members in the party? Hmm. Well, hopefully this month you will, you will be able to see, because hopefully this month I will get these, these penguins painted up. I've got everything else ready. 
all the terrain is done, the sort of enemies are done. I'm just, I've just got to get these penguins done. Um, yeah, so hopefully this month I can actually get that game that was planned for Christmas. Maybe I can get it done maybe for Chinese New Year. <laughs> Christmas would have been better, much more thematic, but you, you do what you can. But yeah, so the penguins are from Archville and Games. They are undercoated. They are ready to be painted, hopefully this month. And then you have the Ice Elemental from Dark Age. This is done. Right, what else do we have? Right, well, that is all of the sort of uh, creature models that I've been painting up and getting done. But I have actually been doing a bit on the sort of terrain side as well, in terms of printing, painting, building. Uh, so I'd like to show you what I've done on that side as well. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to show... I haven't done an excessive amount of 3D printing, to be honest. I've done a few bits and pieces, but nothing really enough to kind of show you. I had, I had a bunch in the last episode of Hobby Table, I think. Um, but we have done a bunch of terrain pieces. Now, I've got a couple of totems here and also a couple of um, more gen uh, sort of terrain pieces uh, from Bestiarum. I think... Oh, where, where the hell did I get these from? I think these were from the... Orox Minotaur set. These ones, I honestly can't remember. Possibly the beat one of the Beastman sets. I'll have to check. Uh, but these these ones here are sort of totems with skulls and wood and bits and pieces hanging off. Uh, so these have been 3D printed. They've been undercoated. I've undercoated these in like a red oxide primer because it helps basically with some of the painting. Again, this is another one here. Some other. Other kind of skull, blood, blood for the blood god, sort of totem. Again, is ready for painting. Um, so again, those are in the queue. But I did manage to finish off a couple of things. Now, these were actually used in my last five leagues from the Borderlands game. I'll put I'll put the link up here where you can see the battle where these guys are in. But unfortunately, when we actually did the battle. The action took place on a different part of the board, so <laughs> you didn't actually get to see much of these <laughs> these pieces in the game. But this is like a cage holding victims, um, prisoners, and it comes in two pieces to make it easier to print. So you've got the lid, you've got a hollow box here, you cover it up so you can't actually see the empty, emptiness inside. But yeah, so this was actually printed and painted for my last Borderlands game. This is when I had to take on the uh, the ogre. I also printed out and painted up a, well, cooking table. <laughs> uh, I, I love Tamiya Clear Red. I love doing the blood and gore. Now, um, there are two ways of using Tamiya Clear Red. This is just using the, the Clear Red by itself. There is also a, a method where you add some black to the Clear Red. It does give a slightly darker finish, a more, um, what's the word, textured finish maybe. But just using the clear red by itself was really nice for this. It's really nice and glory. <laughs> really nice. Um, some people may not appreciate it, which is fine. But, you know, when you're playing monsters and ogres and trolls and giants and stuff, this kind of uh, this kind of fits what, what's, what's really going on. <laughs> so these are some items that I did from Bestiarum. Let me show you some more of the terrain pieces that I have done. Right, for the um, Five Leagues from the Borderlands game, where I was up against the Ogre, as well as the Bestiarum terrain pieces, I also painted up some crystal bases, again, for that for that game in particular. Now, these, these crystals actually came from um, a Kickstarter that spail, spailed, failed spectacularly. It was, I think it was called Drake the Dragon War Game. It was being done on Kickstarter by people called Action Games Miniatures. And it was a bit of a disaster. They, as far as I can remember, I think they basically promised more than they could afford with the pledges. They mismanaged the money. They, I think they actually ended up going on to, what is it called, Dragon's Den or Shark Tank or something like that to try and get more backing. But in the end, I basically only got, I think, half of what I was promised. I only got like half the miniatures, half the cards. 
Um, but these crystal crystal packs were actually some of the miniatures that I did actually receive from that Kickstarter. And I think I was luckier than a lot of people. I think there were people that backed that Drake, the Dragon War game, that didn't get anything. So um, I think I was a bit lucky to kind of get half of what I ordered or what was supposed to be given to me. Um, I mean, the, the, the miniatures that they designed were actually pretty good. I mean, I, the ones that I received, I actually quite like the miniatures. There's quite a lot of flash, unfortunately, but the designs were actually pretty good. And um, at the time of recording, I'm, I'm actually waiting for... Um, I, I ordered from the US. Again, I don't order a lot from the US because of the shipping, but I did order... Um, what is it? Frostgrave, the Ghost Archipelago um, game, which is like the Aztec, Mayan, Inca, fantasy version of Frostgrave kind of thing. Um, and some of the miniatures from this Drake Dragon War game Kickstarter that I actually received could fit in there, actually. So I may actually be able to use some of those miniatures. But these crystal growths or these crystal shards came from that failed Kickstarter. So again, I just wanted some sort of generic sort of scatter terrain to put around caverns and God knows what else. So I got these done. Um, fairly simple to do. Uh, how did I paint these? I think I think it was speed paint, but I don't think it was the magic blue. I think it was. Let's have a think. I think it was the High Lord blue. I think these were the High Lord blue speed paint, and then again edging with a very very light blue. My edging, as you saw from my ice elemental just now, my edging needs a lot of practice. <laughs> it's very amateurish. So yeah, so I got six of these crystal crystal bundles as generic scatter. Uh, what else do we have? Ah, oh, and also, I did also um, do some more scatter pieces for my upcoming game. Let's take a look. Right, now, for my upcoming five leads from the Borderlands games, where I'm going to be using all those skeletons, those old... Citadel Skeletons. I also wanted a bit more scatter terrain. Um, now, I mean, for, for larger terrain pieces, I'm probably still going to stick with the Papercraft, sort of Dave Grafham, Worldworks Games, Ebbles kind of stuff. But for scatter terrain, for small pieces, I'm going to be three printing. Now, what you see here are a bunch of torches and... I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Braziers? Braziers? <laughs> Not bras, braziers, braziers, I, can't, I don't know the proper, proper term. But um, I printed out a bunch of these <laughs> braziers, braziers, I don't know. <laughs> these things. I printed out a whole ton of these on the 3D printer, painted them up, and then I glued them to some sort of generic wasteland tiles. And again, this is, I think this is Worldworks Games, the Hellworks terrain. And it's just put onto some of this artboard that I use for everything. <laughs> um, so I've painted up a bunch of these. And I tried different sizes for the base. This is, I think, a 40 by 40. Uh, here you've got 30 by 30. I've just put a couple of sort of the empty pieces on there. But I kind of found the, the 40 by 30 to be the best size for these guys. So, again, I, I printed up and painted a whole bunch of these, as you can see. As you can see in front of you, I printed up a whole bunch of these that I can put down corridors or in rooms. Um, oh, I haven't told you where I got them from, have I? Sorry, my apologies. These are from uh, my mini factory. I think you can also find on Thingiverse. And it's from a creator called Pelinor. I'll include all these, all these miniatures and everything. I, I always include links down in the description. So I'll include a link for this. Now, these are free, free download from Pelinor. And on his um, My Mini Factory and also his Thingiverse pages, he has a lot of these little, little additional pieces that you can download for free, um, as well as these sort of torches and braziers or whatever they're called. You can also, let me get, let me get the little container. You can also download torches. Which you can print. This is this is this is how the file prints. You'll basically have this like 
uh, ski or this track at the bottom and then they're attached so you can actually you don't actually need these don't need supports you just put this flat onto the plate and you print it as it is and then you just need to break off the individual pieces from the from the skate at the bottom so these are torches that you can put in people's hands or you can fix to the wall of dungeons very very nice he's got loads of stuff on there that you can actually get what else has he got he has <laughs> Uh, he has, he's got frogs and toads that you can print out. <laughs> These would be actually be good for any kind of witch, witch miniature or diorama or setting or scenery that you may have or lake scenery. So you've got toads. Now these things are actually pretty small. Let me get one of the, let me get one of the skeletons so you can see how big these things are. They're really small. And by being very small, they are very usable. You can see here it would be perfectly good enough to stick one of these toads on the base. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty chunky toads, but, you know, they're not stupidly big. And like I say, you can put these on the bases, you can put them on scenery and terrain. So you've got toads. What else has he got? He's got... These are just the ones I've printed out. He's got snakes. So, you can, again, you can put these snakes... Oh, onto bases... Onto hands, onto shoulders. Um, what else? He's got loads of stuff. He's got birds. He's got fish. He's got pots, baskets. He's got mushrooms. <laughs> Lots of little things. Now, the the reason why I like these is when you when you do three D printing, a lot of the time when you try to fit everything together to sort of maximize the use of the build plate. So you can get the maximum number of things printing. You'll end up with little spaces in between. Now, these don't have a huge footprint. So you can actually put a few of these on pretty much every build plate that you do just to kind of fill the little gaps and to get a few little extra pieces. Same thing with these torches. Um, do I have any? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this is a slightly different design of his with like skulls. Again, same person, Pelinor. Um, but again, you see it comes on like a base, a skate. You just, again, no supports. Doesn't need any supports. You just put this on the, onto the build plate straight away. It prints out like this. Then you just remove it from the base, from the base here. And that's it. And like I say, when you're, when you're doing a build plate full of models, you can, you've normally got space to put a few of these just around, you know, to fill up the space. And they're really easy to print. And they can perform and they can fulfill a lot, a lot of uses on our miniatures, terrain, dioramas, and God knows what else. So I, I highly recommend you take a look at this guy. Uh, well, it could be a lady. I'm not sure whether he's, <laughs> who he is, but Pelinor. Look for Pelinor on uh, My Mini Factory or Thingiverse. I'll put the link in the description below. But I really like these little, these little bits and pieces. They're very, very useful. Um, okay, I have one more group of things to show you. Let's take a look. Right, what you see in front of you here is the last batch of things that I've been busy with during December. And I'm not going to speak too much on these because I actually have a separate video going over these alien or fantasy plants or flora. And I'll put the link to that video up at the top here. But these are miniatures from Grim Greeble on Cults 3D. And he has, I think, over 50 different plants and trees and alien fauna and, f not fauna, but flora, and things that you can easily print out and use in science fiction, but also in fantasy games. And I really like these. I, like I said, in the video that I did previously, I was talking about the, the Mantic terrain box that was recently released and how it's amazing and really good and sort of supporting that Kickstarter, even though I can't afford it. But I was also pointing out that there are alternatives to, to expand or to, to use instead. Grim Griebel, Cults 3D. Again, I'll leave the, the link in the description. But he makes these 3D printable alien or fantasy plants. Now, I paint, I've painted up a few. And again, these were used in the last five leagues from the Borderlands game when I was up against the Ogre. So these were kind of like, again, scatter, scatter terrain. 
So I painted up a few of these. I scaled down some of them to make them different sizes. Um, I, I do still need to base these. I mean, the ones that don't have the roots, like this one, I can probably leave as it is. But the ones that have these roots, as you can see here, I really need to put onto some kind of base. Now, I'm still thinking about how I'm going to do that, what I'm going to use, but I'm still leaning towards the, you know, the my normal kind of artboard with some kind of um, floor tile on the top um, because some of these roots are very delicate and I've broken a bunch off already, uh, as you can see on this one. See, there's a, there's a root broken off here. But I do have a separate video going over all of these things, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But like I say, follow the link. Go and have a look. Like and subscribe, all those, all those things. <laughs> but I have also been busy with these during, I think, the end of November and also December. So um, that's the hobby table for this month, or from what I've been doing during December. For my, I mean, for me, it's quite a lot. Compared to other people, maybe it's not so much, but for me, it's quite a lot. Um, what do I have planned for January? Well, I've got those penguins that I need to finish up. Um, I also have... What have I also got to do? I've also got to start looking into this Ghost Archipelago, the uh, the, the game that I'm, I'm waiting to be delivered. Um, because Arch Villain Games has released for Patreons for January a very suitable set. I think it was called the Tome of Demons 3. And a lot of those creatures in that set are very, very suitable for for that Frostgrave Ghost Archipelago. I think, am I saying that right? Archipelago? 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 <laughs> My English isn't good. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be printing some of those figures out. But I really need the book first to sort of see what I need, how many, before I start printing off tons and tons of the wrong type of, of model. But like I say, Archville and Games, January Patreon, February for everybody else. I think Tome of Demons 3 um, has some extremely suitable miniatures for that ghost archipelago. archipelago. <laughs> you know what I mean? That game. So I'm going to be busy with that as well. Uh, I do have some other games coming up. Uh, I am finishing off editing four videos for a game from another Brazilian designer called Scraps. At the time of recording this, I am in the middle of editing those. There are four videos for that. It was a little bit long, um, but I think it's still an interesting watch. It's a, a crafting game, role-playing game, Tetris game? polyominoes or whatever it's called but anyway it's going to be plenty 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 to keep you guys interested now uh, at the end of last year i think mid-december i did reach the 1000 subscribers mark so thank you so much for everybody who subscribed i can now start looking into monetizing the channel which should help me to fund these games and these models that i am using on the videos so that's going to be a great help. But don't stop. I need more. I need more subscribers. I need more views, more likes, more comments. <laughs> more, more, more. All the money that I receive is going straight back into the channel. So like I say, I want it to grow so that I can do bigger and better things. So guys, happy new year. If I haven't, if you haven't seen one of my other videos, uh, I've said happy new year in a few videos already, but happy new year to you guys. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this has given you some ideas, some awareness, maybe some new things that you can try, some new producers, models that you can download and print and paint. Anyway, that is my goal, to get you guys away from Games Workshop and away from Wizards of the Coast. Let's go more indie. Let's, let's get more games on the table. So take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.